the, not Memorial Day, but it's the weekend that we're celebrating. So uh, hopefully everybody's having a good time and uh, doing what they can with all the regulations and restrictions. But uh, it is a weekend that we uh, memorialize those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to give us the freedom that we enjoy. And uh, so uh, I hope that you're having fun being safe and making memories. Uh, today we're going we're gonna to wrap up our series, Messy, uh, Loving Others Isn't Easy. And uh, today we're going to have a message in, uh, that's titled, Today's the Day. And uh, the main scripture is going to be Romans 13, uh, 8 through 14. So if you're uh, following along in your Bible or using your app or whatever, uh, get that ready, Romans 13, 8 through 14. And we are going to jump right in and start to read that. So starting with verse 8, it says... Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. What law is, uh, is Paul talking about here? Well, in verse 9 it says, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Therefore, why? Why? Because if you love your neighbor, you will not harm them. You will not harm them with adultery or murder or dishonesty or stealing or coveting. And so all of these rules and regulations, all of these laws that were written out, they're all fulfilled with this one commandment. Because if you love your neighbor, you're not going to do any of these things to them. So verse 11 goes on to say this. It says, and do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Well, how do we do that? There's two steps. Number one is in verse 13. It says, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. And number two, verse 14, it says, rather clothe yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, Quickly, I want to share a few more thoughts to unpack this a little bit for us. First, the biblical definition of love does not include our modern culture's uh, acceptance and celebration of what we would consider to be sin. Biblical love is perfect and wise and even discriminating. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. Love is love, right? It only accepts and it only tolerates, right? That's what we're taught. We're taught, ooh, love, everything's great. But I'm sorry, that's not what real love is. Real love does not love everything. Romans 12, 9 uh, says this. It says, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, and cling to what is good. Uh, James Boyce explains it like this. He says, if we truly love, we will hate violence done to other people by whatever means. But we will love those who work for peace and even those who are guilty of the violence because we will want them to turn from their ways. We will hate lying, but we will love the truth and will at the same time even love those who are lying. For we will see them as people who need a savior. You see, pure love, real love, true love desires what is right and what is good. And it hates what is evil and what is violent and what is dishonest. Second, I want to say that Paul writes in verse 14, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that seems kind of strange, and it's not a phrase that we would use in conversation. Uh, we don't talk about clothing ourselves and things besides clothes, usually. And it's the same word that he uses in verse 12 when he writes to put on the armor of light. Well, it is the Greek word in duo, and it means to sink into clothing, uh, to put on, to clothe oneself. And commentaries describe it like putting on a lush, luxurious robe, one that you can sink into. And uh, this is the illustration that Paul is using uh, for how we are supposed to be covered and comfortable in Christ when we become Christians. It is supposed to be something that feels right. It is supposed to be something that is satisfying and comforting and assuring, but also something that is godly. In Ephesians 2, 24, Paul uses the same word when he writes, and to put on a new self. Uh, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. When we become saved, we're supposed to be a new creation. We have a new nature, a new heart. Uh, verse, uh, or uh, St. Augustine is a great example of what the verses that we read in Romans 13, 13 through 14 looks like in the life of a real person. And these verses were actually specifically the verses that later on uh, helped him to become what he became eventually. And to, uh, they served as a direct means uh, to leading him to his faith in Christ. And so as a reminder, verse 13 says, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, uh, not in dissension or jealousy. This described St. Augustine uh, to a T. This is what he was. He did all this stuff and more. If we look at verse 14, it says, Rather clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This describes exactly what he became after his salvation experience, after he became a new creation and had a new heart. He was transformed and he became more like Jesus. And, uh, this is what happened. When he was a young man, he lived this promiscuous lifestyle uh, throughout his whole youth, and he even felt God pressing in on him to be saved, to which he replied to God, leave me a little while. This is what he writes in his confessions. He says, leave me a little while, because he wanted to live according to his flesh for a little bit longer. Now, this seems a little bit bold and defiant to tell God, hey, you know what? I know you're trying to woo me into this relationship that I was created to be in, but uh, if you could just give me a little bit longer, I want to do what I want to do. <laughs> um, but he avoided God and he ran away from conviction for years. But after he was saved, he became one of the most influential, uh, influential Christian theologians of his time and ours. Um, if you are avoiding a response to God's call, uh, if for some reason you're holding back, uh, maybe for the first time, or maybe you've been in and out of church and your relationship has fluctuated with God, and, and, and you're holding back a part of you for some reason, today is the day. In the scripture that we read earlier, Paul tells the Roman church to wake up. And that's what I'm saying today. Wake up. It is time for you to clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and give your whole self to him, everything that you are. If that is you, if I'm talking to you right now and you know that you've been holding back, maybe for years, maybe for just a season, if you are holding back and that is literally what you're doing, I don't want you to wait one more minute. So before I move on to wrap this thing up, I want to pray with you. I don't want to wait. I don't want you to wait. I want to get this done. So now I know it's a little bit weird and it might seem a little televangelist because I'm talking to a camera and you may or may not even be watching this live, but that doesn't matter. All that matters is that you tell God that you surrender, that you give up your life to him, 
that you tell him that you're done living a selfish life, that you are ready to live a life that you were created to live, that you want to be in a love relationship with God. So right now, literally right now, I am going to pray. And while I pray for you, I want you to tell God all that stuff in your words from your heart. So let's pray. Lord, I pray for anyone who is surrendering their life right now, saying a, a prayer, a heartfelt prayer with their, their own mouth and, and whatever words they're using, Lord, to, to make things right. I want you to, uh, to just enter into their life and give them what they need right now to know that what they're praying is having an effect and that things are changing and uh, give them the strength to deny their flesh and uh, to do away with uh, the, the desires that they're having and that they would clothe their self in you. All right, amen. <laughs> so if you just prayed that prayer, I need you to do something else. Step two, I need you to message me, call me, text me or whatever, but I need you to do it today because I wanna talk to you and I want to, uh, to help you move on from this point. Now, my final thoughts. <laughs> this series has been all about loving others. And one of the most real ways to love others is to share Jesus with them in a real and genuine way. Now, I've mentioned this before in a message. And so if you've heard me speak, um, you know, for the last couple of years, you may remember this. But there is a really cool video on YouTube that you can find very easily. And it uh, has the magician Pendulette. And uh, you may or may not know this, but Pendulet is a super smart, talented guy, but he is also a very, very outspoken atheist. And in this video, he says that a man waited uh, to talk to him after one of his shows here in Vegas, and uh, he described this man as a really good guy. He said he was polite, he was honest, he was kind, he was nice, he was complimentary, uh, he was not defensive, and he was sane. He said sane like three times. <laughs> and so he was more impressed with this guy not being a weirdo. So uh, side note, don't be a weirdo. But uh, this guy gave him a Bible. He gave him one of these uh, small Gideon Bibles that has Psalms, Proverbs, and the New Testament. Uh, you've probably all seen one of these. But uh, he gave him one of those, and inside he wrote uh, several phone numbers and an uh, email address so that Pendulet could get a hold of him if he needed to. And Pendulet describes this experience as, quote, unquote, wonderful. So why is that? Why would this atheist who spends a lot of his time uh, talking about how there's no God, why would he describe this guy in such a great way and say that receiving a Bible from him was a wonderful experience? Because he says that even though he's an atheist and he knows there is no God, that he does not respect people who do not share their faith. This sounds weird, right? Because most atheists say, hey, keep it to yourself, buddy. But that's not what he says. He says, if you believe there is a heaven and hell, and there's a chance that someone's going to miss eternity, he says, you should say that to them <laughs> and not hesitate because you think it might be socially awkward. He says, how much do you have to hate somebody to not share your faith with them. He says, how much do you have to hate somebody to believe that and not tell them? Wow, <laughs> that's pretty straightforward. He goes on to say, if I, this is Pendulette, he says, if I believed beyond the shadow of a doubt that there was a truck bearing down on you and you did not believe it, at a certain point, I would tackle you. <laughs> and he said, and this is not as important as that, referring to eternity. He ends this, this short video by saying that this guy was a really good guy, that he cared enough to share with me his faith. And then he says, and this is a quote, he was a very, very, very good man. And he said, that was a very good man who gave me that book. 
This is an atheist practically begging Christians to share their faith and saying that that is authentic and that's what makes them real. Loving our neighbors means a lot of things, but one of the most real ways to love others is to share Jesus with them. So I challenge you, if you have faith, if you claim to be a believer and you're not sharing your faith, are you loving your neighbors? Now is the time. Today is the day. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to come together, even if it's online, to worship you, to sing praises to your name, to open up your word, to see what you've taught us through the apostles and to be inspired and be challenged. And I just pray that each and every person that's hearing these words, me, everybody in this room, everybody who's hearing it on, online, I pray that we would be inspired and challenged. I pray that if we don't have a relationship with you, if we're holding back, if we're seeking out the desires of the flesh rather than you, I pray that we will give it up, give it up to you. And all those who are, are claiming faith and believing in you, who aren't sharing their faith with others, I pray that you'll give us the strength. I pray, oh Lord God, that this message will inspire and encourage and challenge us to get out there and love our neighbors with the most genuine, real, authentic thing that we could do, and that is to share our faith with them. We love you so much. You're an amazing God. In Jesus' name, amen.